Okay, let's go ahead and move on to the media. Uh, I think we just spent like half an hour dissecting all of that, <laughs> which is kind of what you need. You need to go into all of the nuance and the detail and listen to the speech. And over on cable news, uh, you're not hearing any of that. You're hearing a constant drumbeat for war. Perhaps the single most insane piece that we want to draw is that an argument over on MSNBC's Meet the Press from Yamish Alcindor that the U.S. should prepare to go to war for oil. This is not a joke. It feels like it's 2002 again. Let's take a listen. But also the thing that you hear President Biden saying is Americans need to prepare, be, be prepared for if this comes to our shores right. and it comes to, to our shores and the effect of higher gas prices when we already are seeing an eight-year high. We're already seeing inflation at 40-year highs. So the president is also trying to tell Americans if we have to get involved here, the cost of freedom may be in your wallets at the gas tank. Oh my, cost of freedom in the gas tank. I mean, this feels like Iraq. If you know, we have to get involved here, yeah. the cost of freedom- What are you saying? Maybe in our wallets at the gas tank? Like, well, legitimately, what are you saying? Are you saying we should <laughs> go to war? And Like, I, I just did an entire thing where I was concerned about gas price, but that doesn't mean that you go and invade another country. I think the bigger problem is that this is the type of analysis which people are getting bombarded with. You know, I was looking, Andrea Mitchell, who of course is like, I don't know, basically an ambassador for NATO, um, over on her program, she quoted, you know, two officials being like, this is an invasion. Former Ambassador McCall say that what happened today Day is an invasion. You can't come into a country uninvited. Is the White House listening? This is my always question. What are you calling for? What are you asking? You know, go ahead and put the next uh, uh, up there on the screen, which is that we are seeing a full-scale insanity amongst the kind of elite establishment left. Here, Lawrence Tribe, who himself was an advisor to Joe Biden's Supreme Court counsel, says, led by Fox News' Tucker Carlson, the GOP's Trump wing appears to be throwing its weight behind Putin. If Putin opts to wage war on our ally Ukraine, such aid and comfort to an enemy would appear to become treason, as defined by the Article 3 of the U.S. Constitution. This is just one of those things where That's this language psycho. is dangerous. Dangerous by that standard, and I'm not saying I even agree with all of Tucker's coverage on Ukraine, but you know, tonally, I would say there's probably some similarity between some of the things we've been saying here. Would that qualify us as treason? Like yes. this is not yes, it would. the Alien and Sedition Acts of whatever, nine, you know, 1793, and that's essentially the spirit under which Mr. Tribe is go ahead and pushing for. So as much as we can condemn Putin, as we did in our coverage, as much as we can show you the nuance and say, look, if he had done this, he probably would have had more legitimacy and we can critique the US position. These people are crazy. And we see this over and over again. I don't think we have it cut, but you know, we were looking at CNN's Jim Shuto, who is the head national security reporter for CNN, who is based right now in Kiev and saying things like, is this it? Sneering at the White House position. I see Jake Tapper and other people at CNN constantly retweeting things calling for extremely harsh sanctions against the Russians. Now look, maybe that's the correct policy if they cross the Ukrainian front line. But right now, they are currently occupying a place that has been in civil war for eight years. The White House has the correct view, which is it is substantively different if you're here than if you're here. And what I mean by that is part of the formula of a currently occupied place or in a place where there's literal Ukrainian troops and you're engaging in a new type of warfare. And yet, Crystal, the press is universal in calling for the most aggressive and hawkish posture yeah. possible from the United States. And it's the repeat of Afghanistan all over again, you know? And I, I'm, uh, I gotta say too, like you brought up Newt Gingrich and all these people crying Munich in 1938. You people look like fools. I can't wait to watch, by the way, Trump who wanted better relations with Putin to come out with some ridiculous statement and be like, Biden is a weak He's man. Weak. You know, I would have stood up. It's like, okay, well, what does that mean? What do you mean by standing up? You wanna send troops over to Ukraine? Cause I don't wanna do that. And that's not what America first meant whenever you're running in 2016. The culture warification I'm watching over on the GOP side is just disgusting to behold. Same thing that happened under Afghanistan. Yeah, there's a lot to say here. I have the yeah. Newt Gingrich quote just to show you that there's truly bipartisan uh, insanity, right. Right. <laughs> dangerous insanity around this. He says, the Biden administration talks and Putin acts. This is such a clear replay of Chamberlain trying to deal with Hitler that it's more than a little frightening. Putin is pushing day by day and has no fear of NATO because he has no fear of the United States or his president. What, so, what are you talking about? Exactly. Yeah. And okay, 
okay, so what what do you yeah. want? And, okay, so and, you want war. And okay. the most important question is, and then what? Yeah, exactly. And then what? Um, I think Russiagate has obviously, the mass hysteria of Russiagate over four plus years has led to this total hysteria um, that prohibits the a significant chunk of the public from being able to analyze this in anything approaching an objective manner. Mm -hmm. And so what we've seen since Russia's so-called peacekeeping operation into the Eastern separatist um, areas, which is not acceptable or okay in any way, but there's an immediate reaching for the most inflammatory rhetoric yep. about what this represents. And that puts a lot of pressure on the Biden administration oh, because immense pressure they're out there else. trying to say, listen, this is different than a wholesale invasion of Ukraine. This is not the same. Russian troops have been in this area for a long time. So we're going to react, but we're going to do it in a way that is commensurate with what they have done um, so far. And because you have such media, consistent media pressure, wanting them to call it an invasion, wanting to levy more aggressive sanctions, wanting to take this like, extremely hawkish sort of stance towards the situation, you know, that makes it difficult for the administration to hold the more reasonable line that they have at this point. Because again, going back to Biden's original comments, I mean, this is what he said, and I think these were his most sort of like candid and truly what he thought comments when he lets it slip. Yeah, if he does this, you know, if he goes into the Eastern separatist regions, then we'll have to see how we respond. And then the media attacks him relentlessly for the honesty of those comments yes. and that he's not just consistently hawkish. And then what we saw from the administration after that was this more consistently hawkish tone, which we don't know. We can't get into the mind of Putin, but did that contribute to the escalation that we see now? We don't know. So it is very, it's not just that these people suck and they're wrong. It's that their hysteria around this and their desire to sort of call out anyone who doesn't stay right on their, you know, hawkish script um, is extremely dangerous. And it's obviously not the first time we've seen this impulse in recent American history. I think we talked yesterday about a similar hysteria after 9-11, which of course, oh, yeah. you know, is a direct attack on our soil. But you saw this same, you know, there was a whole movement on, especially among Republicans, but some Democrats as well, to say you can't even question U.S. policy. You can't question, you can't say we can't go to war. You can't, you know, you can't question what we're doing now that we're over there. You have to support the U.S. And if you don't, you're a traitor, the whole freedom fries, all that nonsense and hysteria, which some of these very same people we're able to see very clearly at the time. And now when it comes to this situation, because we've had mass hysteria around Russia and Putin for four years, now their thinking is completely cloudy. And the last thing I'll say here, because Glenn has been uh, pointing this out consistently, mm -hmm. is you can tell what a dramatic shift there's been in the, the thinking among democratic elites and you know liberal intelligentsia is that Obama's tone with regards to Russia was dramatically different. Yes, some of the during very, the Crimean crisis. During the Crimean, some of the very same things that he said then, including acknowledging what is just a fact that Russia has a lot greater, uh, a lot greater interest and a lot more at stake in Ukraine than we directly do. I guess that would be considered treason now. Yeah, let me read here from an Atlantic article with Obama from 2015. Obama's theory here is simple. Ukraine is a core Russian interest, but not an American one. So Russia will always be able to maintain escalatory dominance there. The fact is, is that Ukraine, which is not a NATO country, is going to be vulnerable to military domination by Russia no matter what we do. I asked Obama whether his position on Ukraine was realistic or fatalistic. Quote, it's realistic, Obama said. Quote, this is an example of where we have to be very clear about what our core interests are and what we are willing to go to war for. In fact, he expounds even more. He says, if there is somebody in this town that would claim we would consider going to war with Russia over Crimea and Eastern Ukraine, they should speak up and be very clear about it. That is, yeah, you know what? I agree, Mr. President. And, uh, 
It's amazing that the Democrats have shifted so much on that. I sent you that polling data just yesterday from a focus group in South Texas where Democratic voters were actually more likely to say that the U.S. should send troops to Ukraine than the Republican group. I mean, personally, I wish both groups would say that, no, that we shouldn't be doing that. But Sad. there is a Sad. real cost to years of, you know, just Russiagate absolute madness. And, you know, I've, I've said this too. My great fear is that we will be distracted once again by the problems of the old world while we continue to see a reshaping of the entire global order. I mean, the interests of the United States do not lay in the long term on the European continent. They lay in Asia. And yet we continue to just be distracted by these internecine ridiculous conflicts dating back to the 16 and 1700s. They're not the powerhouse they once were. You know that Russia's economy is the size of Spain? Spain! Okay, the Italians are beating them. Like I, you, that takes skill in order to lose to them economically if you look at the grand scheme of history. And yet we are continue to just be f so focused on them be simply because they're closer and we have more historical ties. We're missing the forest completely the for war. the tree. It's yeah, culture war culture too. war. I mean, listen. Drives me crazy. Russia is a proud nation and they feel like the, the justifiable part, right. the like part that you can understand is they just feel like they've been humiliated. Yeah, and I mean, they have, from over, their perspective, I get it. Over like, and over again. Yeah. And, you know, that at some point they have to put their foot down. That does not excuse the aggression here, which uh -huh. has led to an extraordinarily dangerous situation. But um, you will certainly never hear that perspective on no, you're not mainstream hear. press. Yeah, I mean, you can. it's possible to say Putin is bad. He has a, a, good, a, a fine point. Or he has, you know, a point whenever it comes to this particular angle. But now, apparently, we got to go to war. Because when you uh, just for, treat someone as a caricature, yeah, and you right. don't try to say, okay, well, here's a little bit of where they're coming from and a little bit of where maybe we can see their point, then you end up with hysterical overreactions. Because how else do you deal with, like, an unmoored madman who's right. just, like, acting in insane ways? Then, yeah, you, the only way you can deal with such a person is through potentially aggressive action. So by making this, creating this caricaturish portrait of the Russian threat and of Putin the mastermind and Putin the puppeteer and Putin, you know, holding blackmail over Trump and basically de facto controlling our government— that has created a significantly more uh, more damaging and dangerous situation. And unfortunately, Democrats, I think, especially are more susceptible to be cowed by um, liberal media in right. particular. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. That's right, just as a reminder, you can become a premium subscriber today. Watch the full show completely uncut, our reactions to each other's monologues. You get to listen to it, you get to ask us questions, all that good stuff. Link is right there in the description or at breakingpoints.com. Best of all, great way to say screw you to the mainstream media.